Hello, everyone. How are you? I am Vina Li, your Tai Chi examiner. And uh, recently, you probably heard uh, this report on NPR, National Public Radio Station, about uh, the effect of Tai Chi Chuan and how it improved uh, people with mild cognitive um, um, situation and to improve their uh, memory, uh, their, yeah. And also, um, also their moving, their uh, gait. And so this is a great. And uh, in case you miss the, the um, report, and uh, let me just give you a, a summary, okay? A simple summary. And they talk about a, a recent uh, scientific study. It was published. And then if you uh, want to go to the pop map, which is, by the National Institute of Health, okay? And uh, it's a, a great database and has all the scientific studies there. So if you want to look it up yourself, you can do that. But let me just give you a, a quick uh, summary. And uh, so this research, they, um, they, uh, they recruited 308 uh, seniors and the average age is 75 years old. It's my age group, okay? <laughs> and uh, so, and they, they before the, uh, they, they do the study and uh, they gave them a test. And this is called the, the Montreal uh, test and to find out their memory uh, situation. So just uh, uh, give you a really uh, simple um, conclusion is uh, averaging uh, of these group of 300 people, they are slightly below the baseline as the so-called uh, uh, normal, okay? So they are mildly uh, um, cognitively, uh, how should I say, impaired. So, so they uh, divide them into three groups and one group, and they did a so-called conventional uh, exercise like uh, stretching. And the second group, and that they do um, a very, very simplified Tai Chi uh, exercise, and it's called Tai Chi Chuan, T-A-I, second word, J-I, Chuan, Q-U-A-N. Q-U-A-N in Chinese means boxing, okay? And it is, a, like I say, it's a very, very simplified uh, Tai Chi form and the original based on the simplified uh, Tai Chi 24, not the authentic uh, Tai Chi form, not the traditional Tai Chi form. And then the third group, because maybe because the, the simplified Tai Chi, you know, is very simple. So they, they asked uh, the group of people there, not only they learn about this uh, simple Tai Chi Chuan, and they also asked them to do something else like uh, Spelling a word for me. How do you spell, uh, say, recording? Okay. And you, can you spell backwards? And guess what? After 24 weeks, and uh, oh, by the way, they meet twice a week. And uh, they found out um, the, the group learning the simple Tai Chi Chuan and uh, does so much better than the. Um, the, how should I say, the stretching group, uh, not only about uh, the cognitive capability and also about their gait and uh, uh, how stable they are because of their age. So some of them, they were not as stable. So they found out that they can walk more stably. And guess what? The, the, the third group, which is, the, is called enhanced group, and uh, their cognitive uh, capability enhance a lot more. And so were their uh, balance. So to me, this is a very, very good news. And, uh, and uh, two, two uh, areas, first of all, the mainstream media normally don't report about Tai Chi very much. And uh, we're very great, uh, uh, appreciative <laughs> that NPR uh, did this story. And then, and the second thing is uh, it proved that uh, Tai Chi Chuan is more um, effective than the conventional uh, exercise like uh, stretching. So, and, um, it, but uh, this, uh, how should I say, report, um, there's so many things we can talk about. 
And uh, today, I am so, so, so grateful that uh, my Tai Chi sister, Sifu Sharon Smith, uh, she's coming here. I know she's very busy with all her teaching and all the projects she is undertaking. And uh, she um, is joining me. And uh, so we can have a little uh, talk and a chat on that. And as many of you, if you're in the, the uh, global Tai Chi and Qigong community, you know who she is, right? And then some of you, and if you are new to the healing art, you may not know who she is. Let me give you, of course, her bio is pretty long. And I don't want to waste all your time to talk about it. But let me give you one example. This is my personal experience, okay? And last month, and uh, both Sharon and I, we attended, uh, we were invited uh, to go to Harvard Medical School's uh, the science conference talking about the Tai Chi and Qigong. So, you know, it, it took most people like 30 seconds to walk from the entrance to the, the conference room, on the last maybe 10 seconds, but not for Sharon, okay? Because she got stopped again and again. People said, oh, you're Sharon Smith, right? Are you Sharon Smith? And I was next to her. I felt like I was with a celebrity. And then some people she, she recognized and because she was a host for the Shift Network. And um, so she, she knows a lot of people, but a lot of people she doesn't know, but they know her. <laughs> so, so again, I feel like, I was walking along with a celebrity, and that's uh, uh, Sharon. And uh, and uh, she, she has uh, spent many of her uh, years and uh, uh, studying, uh, teaching, promoting the healing art. And uh, she, uh, how should I say, she's never tired of doing that. And uh, and she's a very uh, you know high in her skill level and very deep in her knowledge. So I think it's a great opportunity. We can chat with Sufu Sharon and um, to talk about this very interesting topic and uh, also related issues. So now let's wear, welcome Sharon. Yay! <laughs> okay, Sharon, thank you. Thank you very, very much uh, for, for coming. And um, so like I said, I know you're very, very busy. And, uh, and finally, with, uh, I was able to grab this uh, time slot from you. And uh, so um, I, I know you, uh, you you already heard the, the report, right? The, the NPR news, right? And uh, so um, well, what's your take on it when you uh, first uh, heard about the, the news? And um, yeah, go ahead, talk about it. Well, thank you, Violet, for such a nice introduction. Um, you know, I had a lot of thoughts about it. Uh, one of the main ones was, wow, this is on national news. People should know that Tai Chi helps uh, your mind as well as your body. And as we discussed, a lot of the studies uh, that people know about, like Tai Chi being good for fall prevention, for hypertension, for all the things that we know about. Those have been out for a while, but the unique thing about that conference was that we got some information about why these things work. And so I think that the timing of this study coming out on national news was very important. Um, however, when I went to look at the actual practice that they studied, I was surprised because it was um, very simple. And there's there's nothing wrong with simplicity in Tai Chi. It I was think they have eight movements, and then, yeah. but all eight movements all looks very similar and that uh, in many ways is very kind of resembling the young style Tai Chi's uh, like a, a, a water off, right? And yeah. uh, 
board and off. You, you, yes, and you, 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 yeah, the extra and, of young uh, uh, parting the wild horse's mane and the fair lady of the shuttle. Yeah, I mean, the movements were kind of familiar, but they were, it, it was like watching for me, <laughs> and I don't mean <laughs> to be super critical, but it was like watching a shadow of what Tai Chi really is. It was like such a thin part of the depth of Tai Chi practice. And I was astounded that they got such good results from that. And then I thought to myself, wow, if they got good results for something so simple, think of the results you would get if you actually studied Tai Chi that had more Tai Chi principles more depth. That's, well, that's true too. But um, I, I think, um, um, first of all, I have to give uh, Dr. Fu Zhongli. He is um, uh, with the uh, uh, Oregon Research Institute. And uh, um, he is a, a well-published scientist. And uh, his study has been published on the New England Journal of Medicine and, uh, and other very reputable uh, uh, journals and um, uh, I, I and then based on his study and the Tai Chi Chuan uh, has been proven it's great for um, improve the people's balance even for Parkinson patients so that's just huge right and then I see now he's it's also uh, so doing research and uh, in the in the mind part and uh, like this cognitive uh, area so so uh, that that's very good and i think uh, this uh, form the simplified form uh, was uh, how should I, uh, created or uh, modified by him and maybe with some other uh, people and uh, yeah. on their website they mentioned is a uh, it's a modified form for uh, from the uh, tai chi 24 Tai Chi 24 for someone who's new, uh, just for your information, Tai Chi 24 uh, was a uh, uh, simplified form <laughs> from the uh, authentic uh, young star Tai Chi Chuan and uh, promoted by Chinese government. And uh, of course, in, in the US, most people thought, oh my God, Tai Chi 24 is very complicated. And that, but they simplify from there. So that, that's what, um, you know, they have. And uh, I guess um, maybe uh, the challenge is because they, a lot of time people look at Tai Chi Chuan, they say, okay, oh, it's so easy until they start trying it. And they thought, oh my God, it's so difficult. And uh, I don't know, sharing uh, your experience and, um, um, you know, a lot of people, they, they just, I talk to other instructors also, they say, you know, a lot of people, once they, they had one or two classes, they decided to quit because they just cannot handle the, 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 the complication, complicated, you know, uh, movements and, and so forth. So maybe that's why they simplified it and, uh, and simplified it and, uh, and uh, make it the way it is. What do you yeah. think? So, you know, um, the first level of, of learning a Tai Chi form is memorizing a sequence. And for some people, that's very difficult. That, you know, not, not even going deeper into the Tai Chi principles, but me actually memorizing a sequence, remembering what movement comes next. So on that level, I really appreciate that he did an eight movement form because I know that that is useful to people. For, for myself, I teach uh, a class which I call Tai Chi for older adults and people recovering from illness. And in that class, I teach a 13 movement uh, Tai Chi form. And, you know, in 13 movements or in eight movements, you can incorporate all the principles of Tai Chi. What I think, and you know, I don't really know 
what those classes are like. And, and I also want to give Fu Zhang Li a lot of credit because I just enjoyed his presentation at Harvard. He's so enthusiastic and, you know, he clearly loves the art and he's come up with something that can be, um, uh, I don't want to say imitate, but it can be like a protocol. You know, he's come up yes. with something that can be used. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate all that. For myself though, I feel like any Tai Chi, first of all, it's great that uh, they did this study on this eight movement form, but I wished that the form had more Tai Chi in it. <laughs> Instead yeah. of just like doing these eight movements, which is really, to me, the first level of learning Tai Chi is to to memorize that and and you know maybe there are other classes where people go deeper into it um but i think this is a a danger in uh in the survival of the art of tai chi when it gets simplified and simplified and simplified so it's no longer really tai chi it's like tai chi exercise you know well, Which, actually, I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, well, one thing uh, I, I understand uh, many people in the in the industry uh, are worrying about so-called dumbing down. And then uh, are we stripping so many things out and then it becomes nothing. And then, you know, uh, taking away uh, the, the richness and beauty of the uh, the healing uh, I, I I have heard a lot of that and I think that, that that's a genuine concern and of course I myself may be more optimistic or I want to be more optimistic and so so I also feel you know in this uh, study especially it proved a point yes yes they when they do a very simplified form and like the one you know, they, they did a Tai Chi Chuan. And I, I hate to say that because that's Tai Chi Chuan, that's normally what we call the, uh, call the authentic ones that way too, right? It's, so, it's confusing the the name that he gave this eight movement Yes, form. yes. I, I wish he would have called it something different. Well, I think that his uh, entire name is Tai Chi Chuan, a movement for... Um, a better ba balance. Yeah. So it's a uh, TJ um, is Q, TJ Q, MBB. That's uh, the acronyms for it. That's yeah. his, it's a long name, but uh, sometimes and I think uh, NPR dropped the, the last three MBB. So so this makes it like, well, Tai Chi Chuan, we all know Tai Chi Chuan, but this is not exactly your regular Tai Chi Chuan, right? So, so that that's a confusing part, and so so you, we we see that even with that simplified, like you said, it has a great result, right? And but if you wanted to have a better result, is you need to make it harder <laughs> by adding something into it. So it's like you're taking everything out. There is, like, uh oh. Maybe it's too much. Let's put something back. <laughs> but uh, to me, is I wish they would put something that's more Tai Chi instead of which is something is not related to Tai Chi, say spelling. Because when your mind start spelling something, it's no longer with your body. It's a divorce of the mind and body. So I wish they would be doing more, adding some. Uh, principles, Tai Chi principles of, uh, you know, a lot of, especially about body alignments, uh, elements into the form. That would be good. And, but that also, I think, uh, in a way to look at, so uh, many people, if you're out there, you, you practice, you feel, oh my God, this is so difficult, right? Don't give up because it's good for the brain. <laughs> Don't you agree? Sure. Yeah, I do. I agree with that. And um, I was I was trying to think about why they might have done it that way. 
And there were two reasons that I came up with. One is that it's a kind of a Western thing to spell, you know, to like use your mind like that. And maybe people, uh, you know, people who do crossword puzzle, whatever, they, they're they used to like relying on their mind in that kind of way. That would be yeah. one reason. Yeah, I Other see that. Yeah, with the spelling, they don't have to use their hand. They just use their mouth and then they uh, move their arms. And uh, yeah, I, maybe that's the reason. I don't know. I, the other reason I think is related to the study. I forget who presented it. And maybe, I think it was the guy from Tufts. I can't remember his name. But uh, it was about gait and Tai Chi. And yes. Mm -hmm. He had done a study about people. It was tangentially about Tai Chi. It wasn't really a study of Tai Chi, but it was about walking and counting backwards by three. So it might be that this idea of doing two things is lodged in the scientific research imagination that you do something with your body and then you do something with your mind, but they don't understand yeah, or they haven't, they might understand, but they haven't yet studied how the mind is really involved in the Tai Chi practice, you know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Really, mm -hmm. they, they get it, you know, mm -hmm. they get it. Um, but I, I think that it's a limitation of, you know, sort of western research mind that they didn't come up with a way to actually study uh the tai chi itself you know that that what tai chi does itself instead of adding something to kind of prove that it works like what does tai chi do itself you know i mean i've always thought that a lot of these studies I, I don't like the premise of a lot of the studies. I would like to see studies done on people like you and me and other masters who have been practicing for 20 years or 30 years and follow those people as they get older and then measure them against other people in the population. Because people who practice over a lifetime they definitely are getting uh, their benefits are geometrically multiplied. Don't you agree? Oh, that that too. And um, so um, recently, and uh, I I did a presentation about my takeaway from the the Harvard conference by okay. and regarding the science of Tai Chi Chuan and Qigong as a whole person's health. And uh, I appreciate uh, you helped me prior to my presentation and then just help me to understand what was presented better. So, so after I did the presentation and uh, with some of the input from the participant and uh, I uh, published an article and uh, about uh, you know, um, uh, my notes basically. And then and the one thing I, I felt like, you know, I, I kind of put my wish list there. I say, I wish they would be doing in the some uh, uh, study comparison study of somebody practicing long time versus you know a, a, a short time, and also um, doing a a real form, a long form, and versus a short form, and why and. Um, I understand it, it takes a long time to learn a long form, especially Yang style one, 108 movement and Chen style 74 movement. It, it will take a long time and, uh, for anyone to learn at, at least a, a couple of years, right? And uh, the, the funding is an issue. They, they, most of the study, they, if they can do for, for like this one, 24 weeks actually is pretty good. A lot of them, they just can just do like for, for 12 weeks. So, so I think that that's the issue. However, and uh, I, I think, uh, you know, 
if we do a study like that, a long form versus a short form, we will see uh, uh, different kind of uh, results. And uh, one of the, why I say that, I re remember back many years ago, I uh, interviewed uh, Professor James Mortimer. That time he was with uh, a Florida State University. And uh, he did a very, very um, impressive uh, study and was a Fudan University in China and was uh, UC Davis and uh, University of uh, California in Davis. So it, it's a, a joint effort. It was very high standard and uh, uh, remote, I mean, randomized control trial. That's a gold standard. So uh, afterwards, I interviewed him and he was saying, he said, you know, Taiji Chuan is amazing and it can prevent the onset of dementia. They don't want to say for sure, but they say can, uh, they say not prevent, what delay the onset of, uh, of uh, dementia. And that uh, they, they uh, prove, you know, uh, people practice Tai Chi Chuan versus walking. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I just do walking, it's easy. But that's mindless, okay? <laughs> so the, the people's brain actually grew. And uh, during the Harvard conference, and uh, some of the slides actually was his study and to show people's cognitive capability increase and so forth. So when I interview him, he said, well, you know what? Um, um, maybe because the people we, we had uh, participated in the, the Tai Chi, they never learned Tai Chi before. So when they learn something new, they really have to pay attention. So they engage their mind more. And, but once they learned it, maybe they just put on autopilot, right? And then they, the brain will not increase improve that much. And I told him, I said, well, Professor Motimer, let me report it back to you. As I said, I practiced Tai Chi, you know, for many, many years, and I'm still learning. And actually, if Professor, if you're listening and you're watching this, I can tell you after 20 some years, I am still learning. And my teacher, Grandmaster Chen Zhenlei, who is in his 70s, and he started when he was like five or six years old. And when I asked him, he said he's still learning. So don't worry about it. If you ever learn a so-called authentic um, um, Tai Chi Chuan, doesn't matter if it's Yang style, Sun style, Wu, Wu Hao, or Qian style, you will just keep learning, right? Sharon, are you learning still? Always. <laughs> Always, right? Yeah. I mean, every time you practice, you learn something. And um, especially when you get to a certain point, you know, because there are different levels when you engage in Tai Chi practice. As, as I said before, the first level is memorizing a sequence. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's an accomplishment, you know? I mean, my sword teacher, he always said to me like, learning a form is an attainment you know just going to that first level that is an accomplishment because you have to think of all the synaptic connections that your brain makes to learn something like that mm -hmm. and then once you learn that then the fun starts right yes yes definitely definitely then the fun starts yeah. and you know uh uh, in the literature about Qigong and Tai Chi, they say that um, the Qigong masters and the Tai Chi masters have extraordinary powers. Well, mm -hmm. now we know. What are, what are their extraordinary powers? They've just been practicing for so long that their brain is working differently. And yes, yes. Everybody mm -hmm. can do it. You know, you just have to practice and do it. Yes. And uh, well, I overcome that frustration also because a lot of time, like I, I have worked with so many people, thousands of people, and uh, some of them are highly accomplished in their career. It doesn't matter if they are professor, they doctors, or whatnot, right? And then, but when they learn in Tai Chi, they're just like, How's that possible? I cannot, you know, 
get it, right? And some people quit. And, uh, but uh, some people, you know, they, they understand that, you know, it is tough, but I need to, you know, stick around and keep learning. I don't know if you remember uh, this one of the slide. I, I, I can get through my, my, my uh, fire and then see uh, who actually presented. There was one slide is they, they, they had a, this cute brain and with the, the eyes and arms and legs and on the treadmill. And that I think what he's saying is uh, what we're doing Tai Chi Chuan actually is a brain exercise as well. It's not just the, the, the physical body, it's the brain exercise. It's true. It's really mm -hmm. true. And uh, mind body exercise is just very, I should say mind body practice is very different from exercise. You know, exercise is, very... is mm -hmm. like repetitive. Practice is something different. You know, yeah. when you do Tai Chi, you're practicing this mind body connection. And it's powerful. Yeah, of course, I, I had no idea exactly what kind of stretching exercise they, they did it during that uh, um, study, the 24 week study, but stretching. And um, I guess most people probably can understand mostly, probably you can do it mindless, right? You just. Yeah. <laughs> right. You, you just do repetitive work and um, very mindlessly and you can watch TV at the same time. <laughs> so you actually, you know, some people like that, but at the same time, your mind and the body is not together. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, there used to be this, uh, maybe it's still around in New York City. It was a uh, 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 kind of fitness place called Crunch. And they had a big storefront window and you would walk by and you would see the people on the stationary bicycles and they had their headphones on and CNN was on the television and they're like, you know, going away on the stationary bike. And so they're listening to something. They're watching television. Some of them <laughs> even there was a newspaper there or a paperback book, you know, so their mind was like split off in all these different ways. That is not practice, that's exercise. And you know, yeah. exercise has its value, but if you wanna power up your exercise, you're gonna do mind body practice mm -hmm. yeah. or you want to anyway. Yeah, well, uh, Sharon, um, uh, thank you so much for coming. And I really appreciate your knowledge and your time and your energy. And, uh, and but I know you're very busy. And so everyone, if you have any questions uh, for me or for Sharon, and you can, uh, how should I say, you can reach her at the uh, Dao, T-A-O, Sharon, your name, right? At uh, dot com, right? And all you can just post your questions and uh, uh, underneath the, the YouTube video or put on my uh, on the article. And uh, either way, we will get your, your question answered. And, and uh, I hope we did not upset anyone, <laughs> did we? <laughs> thank you, Violet. What a great conversation. Thank you. Okay. okay, well, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, bye.